So last week we did the video on the external adjustment and initial setup on a Holley carburetor. So this week we have to give equal time to the Carter Edelbrock uh, AFB AVS style carb. So just so you guys know the history of this, the Edelbrock is an exact copy of the Carter AFB. And they also added the AVS style, it has that adjustable air valve over the secondaries. But functionally they're all the same, so this covers all of those carburetors. So the you don't have an external fluid adjustment like you do on a Holley with these, that's all internal. Um, but other than that, the procedure as far as setting the, the idle stop screw and the throttle mixture screws is identical to the Holley. So rather than be redundant, just go watch that video. Here's a link to it right there. Um, all right, so what makes these things unique? You know, I hear people talk shit about these carburetors and like as soon as I hear that like I know they don't understand carburetors they've never actually worked at one when these things are set up right they're just the ultimate sweetness Holly's great racing carburetor I mean they're good street carburetors but for like for all out performance race car you know you, you have to flow a lot of you know Holly but for a street strip type of car muscle car cruiser that type of deal you can't beat these things so let me just show you real quick what makes these unique? Why they're so user friendly? On a Holly, when you want to make a running change, or you want to make a change the way it runs, you want to change the jetting or you want to change the power valve, you've got to take the float bowl off. You know, it's messy. On a street car where you've got things in the way, maybe an air conditioning compressor, it could be a real pain. Um, when you want to make an equivalent change on these carburetors, you don't have to go inside of it at all. On these things, the jets are located in the bottom of the float balls. So, it, rather than use a power valve, they use a very similar setup with this, with this metering rod and plunger. So, I'll show you how you access this. Now, you could do this with the engine running. Actually, this is one of the tuning steps with these carburetors. But, you access the metering rods through these holes right here. So, you don't, you don't have to take the screw all the way out, just loosen it a couple of few turns and flip this out of the way. Like so. Actually, you, I could have loosened that just a little more. There we go. Alright, so here's, here's your metering rod and plunger setup. And you got this, the step up spring. So what the step up spring does is it fights vacuum. Alright, uh, I'll show you how this works. Now with the engine running, and you do this with the engine running, okay, it's one of the ways you tune these things. With the engine running and, and vacuum high, this plunger right here is going to be buried all the way down like that. When you give it gas, right, it, the spring overcomes that lack of vacuum and pops this up. Now what's happening is, here's a metering rod, okay, here, back up a little bit. Here's a jet as it sits in the bottom of the carburetor. And here's the metering rod. And you see the metering rod has a skinny section and a fat section. Under, under high vacuum, the metering rod is pulled all the way down into the jet so that the fat section of it is in the jet. And that's, that's a fuel restriction. You're actually changing the size of the jet. When you give it gas, vacuum falls off. The spring, the step-up spring, pushes the, lets the, the plunger come up like this. And now you're in the skinny section of the metering rod. That's what's in the jet. And so, obviously, more fuel is going to get through that hole. The way you tune these things, so let's just say, for example, you've, you've made a, ch a cam change, you know. You've got a lumpy cam in the thing, and you don't have any manifold vacuum. What you would do is put, with the engine running, you'll see that this is going to be bouncing up and down. It's just going to be dancing up and down like that. So what you would do is put a lighter step-up spring in it. So when you put the lighter spring in, now, even though there's less vacuum, you've got enough vacuum to overcome that spring and this plunger will sit all the way down. As soon as you give it gas, boom, it pops right up. For making, like for instance, you're at the track, you're making runs, let's say, you know, during the heat of the day, uh, there isn't a lot of oxygen, you'll use a, 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 a thicker metering rod to close off some of the jet, to limit some of the fuel going through there. Let's say, Nine o'clock at night, temperature you know temperature drops down into the seventies, you know, or the, the sixties. Now that you get good air, you you pop this out and you throw a metering rod in there. It's a couple of thousandths of an inch thinner, and that will increase the amount of fuel going through there. Of course, you know you need the parts to do this. And Carter or Edelbrock sells these strip kits. 
This isn't as it comes. This is one that's just off my shelf that I carry around me. But um, it'll give you an assortment of jets and, and, and drop rods and springs and all of that. So you can tailor it any way you want. So it says, these things are just, when they're set up right, they're magical. And once you get a handle on tuning them, you know, it, you can do it on the fly. It takes you like a minute to make, you know, an effective change to them. And the only other thing, a lot of confusion with these. There's an accelerator pump adjustment on these carburetors. You see you've got these three holes. So here's the way you remember this, right? The hole closest to the carburetor is for your hot rods, all right? What this does is it, it increases the volume of the pump shot and it increases the, 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 the quickness of the movement. So you'll, you'll get your biggest, hardest shot with it in the, the, the innermost hole. The outermost hole gives you the softest shot. So basically, you know, hot rod and cruiser. Those are, those are your, you know, or, you know, if you're undecided, just leave it in the middle. That's why the middle hole is there. So that's what that's all about. And then the downside, okay? These carburetors have one quirk, and it has to do with, the, with today's gas, the formulation of today's gas. Here's what happens with this, right? When these carburetors were designed back in the 50s, gasoline had additives that kept it from evaporating quickly, right? Nowadays, gas has gone out of the bowls. Let's say you let the car sit for like 48 hours and it's bone dry. What you'll find with these carburetors is that if you let this thing sit overnight, the secondary fuel circuit goes dry. Uh, the, the fuel just evaporates out of the circuit. So your very first time, the very first time you hit this thing, Every, you can count on almost every time. The first time you hit it, you put it to the floor, it's going to bog, it's going to stumble, it's, going to, it's just going to fall right on its face. When you go to do it again, bam, she's right there. Because the first time you open the secondaries, you've got to pull fuel through that whole circuit and get it primed again. And then that'll last you until the car sits for any amount of time. So just be aware of that. If, you know, that's caused a lot of embarrassment. Like at stoplights, you know, when you first pass at the track, it's like, and she goes nowhere. So what you want to do is make it a habit when you're first, like let's say you're going to make a run with one of these things, during your burnout, make sure you get into the secondaries for an instant and get that bog and stumble out of the way during that period. This way when you pull the car to the start line and you, you go, she'll be right there. So that's it. I, just, I love these carburetors. They're, uh, th this is my go-to choice for anything that let's say a daily driver, muscle car type of car. You know, you really can't beat them. And they're cheap and they're light. They're really light. They weigh about half as much as a Holly. I know. I'm like a weight fanatic with these things. So anyway, that's it. I'll see you tomorrow.